talk about the art and science of beekeeping in the bee yard. Hi everyone, I'm Steve Rapaski, EAS certified master beekeeper and owner here at Meadowsweet Apiaries in Western Pennsylvania. My goal in producing this video series in the bee yard is to share with you some of the strategies and techniques that I use to manage my colonies on a season by season basis. We're gonna to cover topics such as varroa management, swarm management, single brood chamber management, queen rearing, and much, much more. I was introduced to beekeeping by my father at the age of four. Now, as an EAS certified master beekeeper, I've learned to see the difference between just keeping bees and managing my colonies. I wanna share with you some of my techniques and strategies to help you manage your bees successfully and become a better beekeeper. Stay tuned for a fun and informational video series and welcome to the Bee Yard. Packages. It's a rite of passage for many beekeepers, getting their bees for the very first time, re-establishing colonies that may have died out over the winter time, or just expanding your apiaries. Today we're going to show you how to install packages in two different ways. One is into a colony that has died out. The other way is to install packages into a new hive with brand new foundation for the very first time getting started right. So we're going to take this package here and set this off to the side for now. I have a colony that died out over the winter time. They actually have some uh, honey that's left over. Now this colony I know died from a, a high mite load. It just uh, didn't do what it was supposed to do. I didn't manage it the way I should have managed it and unfortunately it died out. But that's okay because I've checked it. It's free of diseases. The honey is still good. The comb is still good. So we're going to be able to install this package very easily. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just pull out one or two of these frames here just to make some space for my bees to go in when I dump them. You know, checking out the comb, it's a little dark, not too bad. I'll rotate these out every four or five years and this one still has a year or two left in it. But I'll set this off to the side just to check a couple more frames. And here we have another frame that's in, in fairly good condition. So we'll set that off as well. Now what I've done here is created a space that I can dump the bees down in. I have the ability to work on the other frames uh, to install the queen, and then we'll go from there. Now these packages that we have here are relatively new, probably within the last five years or so. They're called the Bee Bus. It's a little different than the traditional packages that we're used to seeing. The traditional packages have the wooden box with the screen on it. Uh, you can see the cluster of bees really well. They have a metal can in there for food. These ones are recyclable plastic. They're a little bit uh, more convenient to open and close. Uh, they're a little bit more durable for shipping, uh, and they do well in handling the bees. One of the nice things about these bee buses too is that on the end here, we could actually just unsnap the side and we could see the bees. But we're gonna leave that closed for now. Now you'll often see many beekeepers installing packages without veils. I don't recommend it. It's a cool day here in Western Pennsylvania. It's about 50 degrees. There are some bees flying around. It only takes one to sting you on the nose and it makes it hurt. So I'm gonna put my veil on for now and then we're gonna get started installing these packages. Now on this package, there's a clear plastic cover that holds the feed can in. So I'm gonna go ahead and just slide that off. My queen is actually in a JZBZ cage in this little slot here. So I'm gonna pull her out and uh, check her to make sure she's doing okay. And she is, she's got a couple of attendants in there taking care of her and uh, she's running around very active. So that's good. I'll set her off to the side here so I don't uh, misplace her. Now, right in the middle, just like the older packages, we have a feeding can. And this is actually a plastic canister filled with a blue, gel-like substance that the bees will feed on. Now I need to remove that just to make it easier for me to install the bees. So I'm just gonna give this a quick tap, pull that feed can out, and I'm gonna put my plastic cover back on just to keep the bees contained. I'll set this off to the side. As you can see, this feed container has a green gel-like substance in it. The traditional packages have a metal can with syrup in it. These are meant to just keep the bees fed for about four or five days at most. It's a temporary feeding solution. Uh, the bees have consumed quite a bit of this and uh, I'm gonna set this off to the side because I won't utilize, utilize that here at the moment. There are several different ways of placing your queen into this colony prior to shaking the package in. 
One way is to just press the queen cage into the drawn out comb that you have available so that it sticks and you can place that frame into the colony. A second way is to place that queen cage on that comb but utilize a rubber band to keep that queen cage in place so it does not slide down and fall to the bottom of your, of your colony. That's not a good thing this time of year. A third way is to use a product called the queen cage holder. It just came out onto the market. It's pretty handy. It's a nice little gadget uh, that holds several different types of queen cages and it'll hang right on top of the frame and it allows the queen cage to be suspended down into the frames along with the bees. Now there's several different types of queen cages that you might come across. This particular cage is called a JZBZ queen cage. It has a tube of queen candy that keeps the queen contained and her workers. And this is providing a soft release for that queen. So what that means is that the queen cannot get out, but her workers on the outside will slowly eat away at that candy over a period of several days releasing that queen. I could also do what's called a hard release, which just basically means I'm gonna open this queen cage, leave her out onto the comb, and let the bees take care of her. The downside to this is that many packages are not directly related to the queen that's installed with them. So you want the package to take several days to be used to this queen pheromone and want to accept her. So by providing them with a slow release of candy, you're giving them the opportunity to get to know her and less a chance for them to abscond. So I'm going to install this queen. I'm gonna just take this uh, frame and put her in here. A fourth way of installing the queen cage, and I failed to mention this, is you could actually just wedge her in between two frames between the top bars so that she does not slide. Now that I'm ready to go, I'm going to just give this package a, a quick thump to knock the bees down and get them out of my way. I'm going to open up this end. And now I'm just going to shake them directly into this Hive. If there are a few bees left in the package, you could just set it off to the side and allow them to fly out on their own. So now I have all my bees shaken into the box. I need to fill up this gap that I have left behind. And what I've done is this box that has uh, died over the winter has had some great frames of honey left behind. So I'm going to slowly place these frames of honey into this hive, and this is gonna give them some quick food immediately adjacent to the cluster of bees. Now, as I mentioned, it's rather cool here in Western Pennsylvania. We're still in the 40s and 50s all this week, so I wanna make sure these bees have plenty of food. In this colony, I've installed my package, I've given them two frames of honey. I'm gonna take one additional step, and that is to provide them with a candy board and this candy board is just hard sugar we're looking at cool weather for the entire week here in the mid to low 40s i want to make sure that they have plenty of food to survive on and do their thing i'm going to put the inner cover and outer cover back on as protection and I have an extra super here and an extra deep with a little bit of honey in it i'm just going to take that away so that we don't attract other pests Now earlier we showed you how to install a package into a colony that had died out over the winter using drawn comb. In front of me is a brand new colony ready for bees. All new frames and foundation. All we have to do is add the queen, add the bees in the package, and we're set to go. This package here already has the queen ready to go. I'm going to pull the queen out here and make sure she's okay and she's out there running around doing her thing. So that's great. We're going to set her off to the side. Let me give this a little bump just to get the bees down. We're gonna take out the, the feeder, put the plastic back on the cover so that they're not flying around. Now I wanna prepare my frame for the queen. There are several different ways to add the queen to the frames. Now, as you saw before, we had drawn comb that we could utilize very easily. Here we don't. If I put my queen there, she's just gonna fall down. So there's a couple of ways we could attach her to this frame. One way is to place a rubber band around the frame, slide my queen cage in there, and let the rubber band hold her in place. 
Another way of doing things is to use a brand new little device on the market. I've been playing with it and I kind of like it. It's made by Honey Lake Bee Company. It's queencageholder.com. And this little device actually holds three different types of queen cages. It holds the Jay-Z BZ cage, it holds the California mini cage, and it holds the three hole Benton cage that we often see used in packages. So I have the Jay-Z BZ cage here and I'm gonna use the queen cage holder to slide my cage in there. I like to keep the candy on top to allow the workers that might be inside to fall to the bottom should they die. It allows the bees to access the candy and the queen can come out right there. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cage, hang it from the top bar, and voila, she's suspended. Now, before I place her in, I'm going to remove a couple of other frames in here. I need to make room to shake the bees down into this colony. So I'm going to place my frame with the queen in here. I don't want to do it after the fact. I want her to already be in my my hive body here. I'm going to put my veil on because as you can see there's some bees flying around. It's a little cool here in western Pennsylvania but the bees still sting and they can still fly so we're going to be protected. Again I'm going to take my package. I'm going to give it a quick little thump to knock the bees down. The nice thing about these new boxes is you could actually pry the ends open. There's a little hinge here. Sometimes a hive tool comes in handy but when I open it my bees are right there, ready to shake out. So I'm just going to take my package. My queen is being suspended right here. And we're just going to shake the bees down into this hive body. Give it a little thump to get the bees out. There's a few bees left. That's not a problem. We'll just set the package on the outside of the box there and let them crawl back in. My queen is suspended. I could gently place my frames back inside. And now my package is installed. The next step on a brand new package installation like this, when you're using brand new comb and, and frames, they are going to need fed. They don't have any resources. Right now we're in the upper 40s, a little chilly, it's overcast. The long-term forecast here for the next five days is calling for the same type of weather. So the bees are not going to be very active. There is potential for this colony to starve if I don't pr provide any food for them. So I have a feeder here already prepared with one-to-one -one sugar syrup. And I'm going to show you how I feed my newly installed packages. Once the bees are installed, the queen is suspended. I take my inner cover. I'm going to install my inner cover. I'm going to take an extra deep hive body. And we're going to have that ready to go. But before I put that extra hive body on, I'm going to show you what I do. I use these quail waters, pheasant feeders, chicken feeders, whatever you want to call them, various shapes, sizes. This is a one gallon. I already have my one-to-one -one sugar mix ready to go. I'm going to turn it upside down outside the hive so I don't spill it. The trough fills up with sugar water and we're ready to go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this right on top of my inner cover leaving the hole in the inner cover exposed. What this does is provides the food in close proximity to the bees. They're able to come up and down very quickly. My queen is offset by a frame. So if this were to leak and go down into the frames, my queen isn't going to drown. Now my feeder is in place. I'm going to take my other deep hive body to protect my feeder. I'm going to put my outer cover on and then my rock for wind protection and raccoon pr protection. The bees are installed. It's a little chilly. I can take my veil off now and I can clean up and do my thing. One last item we don't want to forget is our entrance reducer. On a newly installed package they don't have a lot to defend but they do need to defend themselves. So with my entrance reducer I want to use the smallest entrance and I'm just going to place it down in the front and it gives a little bit more protection for those bees. So as a new beekeeper, this is how I would install a new package of bees. We saw earlier how I, I would install them using drawn comb from a, an old diet, dead out from the winter time. Now we're just gonna let them go for a couple days, come back, check the feeder as necessary and refill it. And hopefully these bees will continue to grow over the next several weeks with the pollen and nectar sources readily available. Until next time, we'll see you in the bee yard.